Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mama Barrett, and tonight we're going to be cooking up some Instapot pot roast with our step-by-step -step Instapot cookbook. If you don't have this yet, do yourself a favor, go get one. This is a recipe that calls for wine, beef stock, carrots, mushrooms. It's delicious. So come on into the kitchen and let's get cooking. Now I chose to do pot roast because this one had a couple of piercings in the plastic and the meat was showing and it was starting to get freezer burn. So I decided that it was time to cook this up and get it out of my freezer. The first thing we're gonna do is turn on our Instapot to saute and then it'll automatically go to high and we just let that go. Now this seasoning is pepper, kosher salt, seasoning salt, parsley, thyme, rosemary, onion, and garlic powder. So I use this flavored salt instead of seasoning salt because it's something I just had in my pantry that I need to use up. So I just use that to substitute. And we're just taking it and rubbing it around the roast. Try and spread that seasoning out as much as you can. So you're just gonna kind of massage that seasoning in there, roll it around, get it completely covered. Just like so. Okay. And I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. So here's a little close up of that flavored salt. This actually went out in August of 2018. I got this on one of my food bank hauls, but it still is not clumpy. Looks great. So I'm using it. It says hot, so it's a little spicy, but I don't think it's too spicy. Our first step is that we are going to sear this roast. The point of searing a roast is it helps kind of lock in the juices so as it cooks, it's harder for them to escape because there's a crust. So it's kind of like a barrier and it keeps them in there. So it makes for a more tender roast. So at this point, we're gonna put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. So we got our olive oil in here and now we're gonna take our roast. Oh yeah, that sizzle, that's what you're looking for. That's what you wanna hear. You really just kinda of wanna leave this alone. Just let it cook for like three minutes per side till you get a nice brown coating. All right, let's go ahead and take a peek at her. And there's some of the oil around here. It's looking good, it's just not quite as crispy as we'd like. All right, let's give her a flip. This is a pretty good size roast. One of the recipe books calls for a three pounder. This is a four pounder. So we are gonna add a couple of extra minutes to the pressure cooking time. About five extra minutes per pound. So we'll do five extra minutes. I mean, considering how long you would take this roast and put it in the crock pot, usually about eight hours, eight to 10 hours, or the oven would take three to four hours. You're getting a good deal by using the Instapot. Whenever I first got my Instapot, I was telling my cousin Alex about it, and she's like, oh, please tell me you got one, because I just got one about a year ago, and I told you about it, and you are just like, I don't need an Instapot, I know how to cook. And I was like, well, there goes my foot in my mouth, huh? Because <laughs> I love this thing, and it is fantastic. I wish I would've got one sooner. This is the Instapot Duo Nova, the eight quart. I have this linked in my Amazon shop below if you are interested in checking this out and making your life a whole lot easier. <laughs> Alright, let's check this side. Yeah, that looks good. And then we're just going to rotate and get it on the side some as well. You want it top, bottom, all the way around. It's just usually, this is probably the hardest part is having to sit here and babysit this meat to get it seared. Now, if you see crusties forming at the bottom of the pan, don't worry about it. That's good stuff. You want that. And that's the kind of sear I'm talking about right there. That's what we're looking for on all four sides. So we're going to pull this puppy back out. And then we're going to put two tablespoons of butter straight in there. Use that to kind of deglaze de the pan. Now, when I'm talking about deglazing, I'm talking about scraping all of those crusty bits off that bottom of the pan. That's what you're looking for. And you have to scrape the bottom of the pan on the Instapot or else a burn notice will pop up and your food will not cook like it's supposed to. All right, now after this is calling for red wine, I am not much of a wine drinker or cooker with, with <laughs> so I don't have much. But I do buy these little four packs of one cup wine, so whenever I do need wine, 
I have one ready to go. I can use the whole thing. I don't have any extra. So we're gonna pour one cup of wine in there. Okay, so we're just gonna continue to deglaze our pan with this wine. All right, so from here, we're going to add three cloves of garlic, and then two onions. I have these quartered and wedged, so they're kind of make like a little bed on the bottom for the meat to rest. We're gonna put eight ounces of mushrooms in here, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, and then it calls for two cups of beef broth. I actually have some chicken stock that I need to use, so I'm gonna use that. Okay, so after the mushrooms and the broth, we are going to put our roast down. And then we have our carrots. Put those right on top, wrapped in some foil here. And then our lid. All right, she is locked, ready to go. And then we are going to pressure cook this for 65 minutes. So you just go to cancel, because it's still on saute, pressure cook. So we're going to go to one hour and five minutes. So we're just gonna let this cook and I'll see you back when we're ready to open her up. All right guys, our pot roast has been in and it's been resting for about 23 minutes. This says you want it anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. So if there's any pressure left, you're gonna go ahead and release that. So to finish this off, we have three tablespoons of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water. This combination is called a slurry. It's what you use to help thicken up sauces and gravies. And then the recipe in this book also calls for a packet of brown gravy mix. This I have in my pantry and it's my oldest one that expires on 223. So I'm going to be using this one first because you always want to follow your rotation method of first in, first out, also known as FIFO. So that's why I label all of my canned goods, so I know. All right, she's almost done. Now it's very important to let this rest and don't force the release button before it's ready because it'll force out all the juices from the pot roast and give you a pretty dry pot roast. So you want to let this rest for 15 to 20 minutes. All right, it just went down, so we're going to open her up. I'm going to grab the trivet here, straight up, and we're just going to let this sit. We got our carrots here. Okay, so from here we have our sauce with our mushrooms and our onions still in here. So we're going to press cancel and then press saute so we can start cooking it from the bottom and bubbling it so we can add our slurry. So a whisk at this point. I honestly think that you don't even need the brown gravy mix. I think this will have enough flavor, but the recipe calls for it, so, and we have it in our pantry, so we're just gonna go ahead and use it. Add all this in there. Sometimes I like to get a little of the hot broth in there and shake it up to get every last bit. Now, if you were to just pour this cornstarch in there without diluting it with water, then you would get a very lumpy gravy, and that's not what we want. So we're going to go ahead and put in this packet brown gravy mixture. Okay, and then we're going to let this cook. Now, one thing with this meal is that it did call for the potatoes to be cooked with it in this foil with the carrots. And I chose not to do the potatoes because I'm just going to make some instant mashed potatoes to go along with it. You could obviously use the other potatoes if you wish and have kind of a mashed potato or just like a boiled steamed potato with it. But that's the beauty of your pantry is that you have the variety to do whatever you feel like doing. I happen to have a bigger roast than what the recipe called for. And I noticed that only having a small amount of carrots, my family always seems to run out of carrots and potatoes because it's such a small quantity. So for leftovers, we don't have any carrots left. So I decided to put more carrots and omit the potatoes and then just make instant potatoes on the side. So we're bubbling now. That's what you want. And you're gonna stir it, whisk it. Okay, and we're gonna let this boil. Here's what those carrots turned out. Mm. Those just need like a sprinkle of salt and those are pretty much good to go. All right, we're gonna call that done. So let's check on this. 
Oh, you see how that just flaked apart? There you have it folks, one juicy looking pot roast. And you can really do this with any kind of roast. You could do this with a pork roast if you want. I did this with a dry tip round roast, really with anything. Now this gravy is a little loose for my liking, but you can always just add some more cornstarch. And there's our roast. So don't be intimidated by pot roast. If you have an Instapot, use it well because it comes in handy and this roast took no trouble at all this was frozen solid this morning and now i have a super tender juicy roast to serve for dinner tonight i'm just going to whip up some instant mashed potatoes i got my carrots that i cooked along with it that should be plenty for my family plus some leftovers so that's why i chose to omit the potatoes and just go for strictly all carrots but you can do whatever you want so I'm going to cut this up and get my dinner table set. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't make me tell you twice. And I'll see you next time.